Hey guys, Wages World here. It is uh, May 11th, 2020. Come at you with the video. Um, just going to give you kind of an update on what's going on a little bit. And plus, I got something really interesting to show you guys. Um, a crazy looking, uh, uh, disappearing, like, into nothingness, coronal mass ejection. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, so. I'll show it to you. You guys make up your mind what you think about what's going on with this. But um, we'll talk about that when we get there. But obviously, we'll start here on the Schumann. Okay, guys. I've been working on my audio a little bit. i got a new device. Um, I don't have a space of my own here in my house. Um, so I have to kind of, you know, be mobile when I do my recording. And um, I do all my research on my computer. But, I, you know, I've said this a bunch before. But I've got a new device. So... My audio is a little off right now, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I am working towards a space of my own to where I can have a proper mic and all that kind of stuff, that kind of a setup. Um, that's my goal. Hopefully, I won't be too far in the future. Um, but let's face it, you know, if you got really bad audio, if you got really bad video production and stuff like that, the people that have been in the community for a while, yes, they're still going to stop and watch your videos. Um, you know, because there's good information in, in people's videos, even if it's got bad quality. But think about yourself when you're, you know, surfing through YouTube. If you come across something new and it's got really bad production value, hard to listen to, the visuals, you know, let's face it, some of them suck. <laughs> bad, you know, always cutting in and out because of bad internet connections and, and stuff like that. And a lot of that's not people's fault. You know, sometimes they can't help that. They're just doing the best they can. But I try to avoid that because uh, what happens is when the new person comes through there and catches that video, they're not they're probably not going to stick around long because they can't really sit there and watch it because it's going to, you know, bother them because of all that other stuff. So if I can, you know, elevate my production value just a little bit, just enough, you know, I'm not trying to be all crazy with it or nothing like that. Um, I'm just saying make it enough to where people are comfortable at least listening to it. That's how you get new people to listen to your stuff, guys. It really is. Um, you know, let's just face it. That's just the truth of it. If it's not entertaining at all, and, and, and if it doesn't bug you, or if it bugs you, you're not going to watch it. You're just going to keep moving. That's exactly what I do. I don't know why anybody else would be any different in that way. So I try to avoid that with what I do here. So with that being said, we're going to move on here. But the human here, guys, there's not really much to talk about. No spiking going on. I'm still researching it, and I have found a lot of literature about how there's like eight different frequencies that have always been there, like a base resonance frequency, eight of them. It's just they haven't been that intense. They're at these same hurt levels. They just haven't been, you know, very intense. But now we're starting to pick them up, which means stuff is changing. And, you know, this is a very polarized conversation. Okay, and I'm not going to get too much into that because there's a lot of infighting in this subject. It really is. Um, a lot, all the stuff I research here is a lot of infighting with, uh, around this whole community. And it's all across YouTube right now, though, guys. And I think it has a lot to do with the big, you know, lockdown that we're all in. Um, but I would encourage you guys also to go watch uh, <laughs> Scott's last live stream. Um, you, YouTube did something really bad to him today. You guys really need to go watch that that um, his last live stream. They basically they tagged his video for showing some stuff, a, a video about a um, a shooting. And yet, if you type in that shooting in a search on YouTube, it shows a it shows a bunch of mainstream media reports on it, and it's the exact same videos that Scott was showing. But theirs were fine. They were fully monetized and the whole bit. Um, Scott came back on, did a whole live stream on it, really fired up, and he should be. Because we all should be fired up about that when that happens to somebody that's just trying to do what they do, you know? And I don't care who it is. You know, if that happens to somebody, that's just flat-out censorship is what that is. And, it, you know, another, another thing is you're letting one person do it and not the other. You know, we always see that. We see it a lot, but to go to this level to put, tag his video is inappropriate when all he did was show the same exact stuff these other guys were showing? Kind of crazy. 
but we're gonna we're gonna move on but guys look here the schumann not much going on so um i do got something really interesting to show you with the cme here real quick so okay guys i got you over here at sdo now um again guys uh this is uh from this is a time lapse starting back on the 10th and um here's that uh filament release that i showed you guys yesterday okay and again there was a couple little uh i don't want you to really call them little they were fast movers that's for sure uh ejections right there from that sunspot looks to be a sunspot i'm not sure if it is or not it is definitely an active area on the sun there's a lot of stuff coming from that area right now um but i'm seeing something that i've not seen before I seen a CME start and it makes it out just past the corona, probably a couple million miles, and then it like just disintegrates. At least according to the tool. Okay. I've never seen this happen. Um, and I'm gonna take you guys over to seeds and show it to you because I'm not seeing much here around that area. Okay. I am seeing some an ejection of some sort. Okay, we're gonna watch it right here. Um Let's see if it rotates through here. See if this is the right spot. Yeah, it kind of is. Um, it's hard to kind of see, but the, where it erupts from, it seems to have erupted from down in this area somewhere. Okay? Maybe even further down to the south um, than that. It might have been this little curly Q thing right here. Um, that could be where it, when it happened. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to take a look at it over at Seeds. Now, that kind of did look like that did blow out there a little bit, didn't it? Let's watch that again. Let's see what that does. Um, right in here. Let's see what that does right there. Yeah, maybe. Okay, that does kind of look like a CME might have tried to leave the sun there. It's kind of hard to see because if, it, if it's pointing towards the back side, um, we might not be able to see it very well because it would be hidden by the corona. Uh, but also, you know, we're still getting activity over here too. Okay, now I'm going to say this too. Um, you know, BP Earthwatch number one, he did a great video today, um, talking about you know the the summer, you know the year without a summer back in the 1800s, and it was right around a solar minimum. That's what it was. Okay, and there was a lot of you know BP kind of went over quite a bit of that stuff, and um, you know we are in that area right now, guys. We're in we're in a solar minimum right now, but. I have to say this the sun's pretty active right now now we're not seeing a whole lot of sunspots but it's being agitated we're seeing you know quite a few little little puffs and 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 you know sparks and stuff from the sun um most of them aren't very big but they're still happening uh, and that doesn't you know again they're not real huge so it's not like big news or anything but the sun is still active and, you know, I'm not sure how how normal that would be during a solar minimum. You know, we, you would think there would be so much more activity when there's a bunch of sunspots on the sun. And right now, you know, we're seeing, you know, at least small to medium-sized CMEs about every other day, if not every day. Now, they might not be coming at us, but they're still happening. So that means the sun as a whole is active. And, you know... Take that for what it's worth. We've already had a hundred days of uh, with no Earth-facing sunspots. That puts us at about 76 percent. Last year we broke a record. At 77 percent of the time, there were no sunspots. That's a space-age record. We've never seen numbers like that. And this one is following real close, and it should, you know, because we should come into this slowly, but. Um, I did not expect to see this kind of activity, you know, stay consistent like this. And I, I could be dead wrong, guys. But, you know, so I'm going to take you guys over here to Seeds, and um, this is what I would say to that. Hope you guys like that. I just trying to have a little bit of fun. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, this is uh, on the 10th. This is the end of the, this is the 10th uh, yesterday. I showed you guys this yesterday. Um, obviously, it's that CME, the end of it. Now, that one's, I guess I'll take you back to the ninth so you guys can see when that one started. Um, but this right here all but proves that stuff is still going on. Okay? Um, it is not slowing down. 
um, you know, back in December and into November last year, um, things really did get pretty slow. We weren't, we weren't seeing too much, you know, no CMEs going. a corner and it slowly ramped up and then it ramped up real fast and it stayed there um and i'm not saying big intense stuff i'm just saying more frequent events small events like what we're looking at right here this isn't going to affect us at all this is not a big cme right here guys okay but it's still a cme and it does tell us the sun is still capable of doing stuff and we have to keep that in mind especially while our shields are weak you know, and even when our shields get stronger, we have to pay attention to this. And something else I want to show you guys here, just kind of look at this. It shows it better on the red over here. If you just kind of back off and you see all the sparkling going on, that means there's a lot of debris flying around. At least where the satellite's at. Okay? And the satellite's close to us. So that does coincide with, you know, the meteor showers and stuff we've been kind of going through. So that's what you're seeing there. Just so you know, okay? Um, you know, it's not some big massive debris tail from some brand new comet or anything like that. Um, this is something that would be expected because we, we go through this all the time. But as you can see, it's more active than normal. And that's because we are, you know, in that debris from a past comet that passed us a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, we expected this. I just wanted to point that out. So, you know... Where's this, uh, probably asking, where's this uh, CME that uh, disappeared? <laughs> well, it's here on the 11th. Um, check this out. Okay, it's on the left side. Watch what happens. Boom. Then gone. Where'd it go? There is no missing time, guys. Okay? That's the first thing I thought. I thought, man, are we missing some time? You know, did this thing jump? Jump some time? If you watch the timestamps, we're not missing no time there. And that, that CME all but disintegrates and doesn't go anywhere. It leaves the sun and it stops. So at least that's what it looks like from this point of view. And I went and looked at it on stereo A. And I'm not seeing much there either. Now, you know, you can kind of see how the, the arm of it kind of went out like this. But it still fades off. Um, this we don't, I, I don't know that I've seen a CME look like this before. Um, I'm not saying it ain't something that hasn't happened before, but to me, when you see something like that, that should at least follow on off the screen. Okay, and we did not see that with this. And, you know, as I was looking at this, if you guys really, you know, if I was to put some filters like with what with Scott's uh, software there, you can almost see like there might be something hanging out right there. And it's almost like it, whatever was there, absorbed all of it. That's what it looks like, just looking from the outside in here. Um, I'm not saying that that's what happened, because obviously I cannot confirm that. But just judging by this tool right here, you can see as that thing, you know, blows out again. We'll watch it again, kind of zoomed in here a little bit. Sometimes you see stuff zoomed out better than you do zoomed in, by the way. Um, but as it's getting ready to blow here, we'll, we'll take a look at it. And, you know, just kind of look in that area right in here. And it's almost like there was something there and it like just whatever was there just kind of absorbed all that that energy um again i don't think i've ever seen a cme do that before then you got another little little popper over here going on okay now check this out we're gonna have to wait on some more data to come in for the next day here but check this out this is the 12th this is the latest capture that right there if this is a true reading that means we're having two CMEs simultaneously, again, on opposite sides of the sun. Okay? I'm not saying that's what's happening right now because I don't know. We have to wait for some more data to come in. Only reason why I'm showing this to you is because I was already here at Seeds. Okay? Um, there's really no way to confirm that until we get more data in. But this tool is most definitely picking up a CME on both sides of the sun. And you can see how it got real bright. So did something happen? I went over and looked at SDO. And the SDO time stopped about the same time this thing did. 
So we're going to have to wait. Um, tomorrow I'll come back on and show you. And we'll take a look at it then and see what happened. But, um, but yeah, guys, I mean, that's just kind of, uh, kind of the stuff that we're looking at right now. And, you know, this here really just kind of threw me for a loop right here. Um, I'm not really sure what caused that, guys. You can see how it picked up the CME and then the tool even quit. The tool quit even picking it up. Watch. Watch the red and blue. It's only there for a second and then it's gone. So I, I just don't, I don't know what, what that, what caused that. Look at that. And it's gone. Boom. That could be something as simple as saying, hey, the tool just does, didn't see it anymore. Um, but I'm not seeing much of that, of that energy going on out. That's what's got me kind of confused. Okay. Um, if anybody else has seen one like this, please drop it down in the comment section. Because um, I sure would like to know. Uh, because it just looks like that thing just kind of faded off into the background. So, <laughs> who knows? I just want to stop over here and show you guys the geoelectric model again. This is the space weather effects on our on our uh, electrical grid. Doesn't look like we're having too much going on right here, guys. Um, we're seeing a little bit of you know flashing and stuff going on, but that's not that's not going to give us any issues. It's just showing a more active area, like we might be getting pulses of uh, solar wind, the small increases, even density, maybe even some polarity change stuff going on there. Um, you know, we are supposed to be uh, crossing over the 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 sheet, so. Um, as we travel through that, I would expect that we're, we're going to see something, um, some sort of, uh, geomagnetic activity. And, um, you know, that's normal when we do that too, by the way. Okay. That ain't something to be freaking out about, but it's something we have to keep an eye on because it can put us into a geomagnetic storm. It's done it before. It'll do it again. I'm sure. Okay, guys, I got you over here at, uh, at NOAA space weather prediction. Okay. Um, here's the ACE data, and as you can see, we're having a density increase. Um, what's the range on that? Yeah, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good increase, okay? Pretty steady uptick there. Um, but what's strange is, if you look at this, the solar wind speed is in yellow there. Um, it's definitely kind of diving off just a little, but it's not having the same drastic, uh, movement as the density is. And I said this before, there, you know, density is just as important, if not more important, than solar wind speed when we're talking about how hard it hits us, okay? I've been explaining that for almost two years now, that that was my opinion on it. And actually, last uh, here in the past few months, I think it was last uh, end of last year, maybe the, the, the middle of last year, they came out with some papers and some articles and some studies, I guess, that were peer-reviewed. And they were basically saying that same thing. Um, the density is very, very important. We can take big hits and not have high solar wind speed. And, you know, it just makes sense, okay? You take something really heavy and you roll it slow and you hit something, it's going to hit just as hard as if you take something light and throw it real fast. And they're going to hit about the same, same hard, okay? It's going to hit about, you know, the same strength. And that's, that's kind of what I was saying. Um, but you know, when they came out with those papers that, you know, it did kind of validate what I was kind of thinking in my own, in my own head. And I'd actually mentioned it on my channel. Um, but it, you know, I do think that density plays a really big role, bigger than what they were giving it credit for is what I'm trying to say. Um, okay. And then what I would do right here, guys, here's the sun, here's the earth. Okay. And we're connected by interplanetary magnetic field lines, right? Um, and I've talked about this before. Now, a low dense particle that travels from the sun to the earth travels along that line of magnetism, that connection, okay? And when it's low density, what it does is it actually is further away from the center of that. So when it gets here, it they're hitting in more of a spread out area, okay? So the more dense ones, they hang closer to the middle of that line. So they're like this. So when they hit, they're hitting at a more precise spot. Okay? They hit harder because of that. Um, 
so not not to mention that they're more dense also okay but they're that's what we're talking about here okay that's just an analogy that i like to use there because it does kind of help people understand what i'm talking about why density can actually affect just as much as high solar wind speed can you know you take that same you know, low dense particle moving real fast okay yes it's going to hit hard and it's going to affect us but you take that same speed that fast and add a high dense particle there you're really going to take a hit and that's why i've always said when we look at these models when you see this density going up and then at the same time, you've seen the solar wind speed going up, the temperatures going up, you know that there's going to be a hit, <laughs> okay? You just know that's what's going to happen. And that's what it's showing. That's what the data would show. Now, we can go over here and look. And again, guys, I don't trust this thing hardly at all. Now, what, what I will say to this is if you see the, the wind speed down here, the green line is earth conditions, okay? The red line is stereo A. Where's stereo A? Well, it's in Earth orbit. You guys look here. This is stereo A. This is Earth. This is stereo B. They're all orbiting the sun on the same orbital line. Okay, they're pretty much the same distance from the sun as the other one is. Okay, it's close. Close anyway. Not exact, but close. So when we look at this, it's showing us the conditions of stereo A in red. So right there is showing you that something has blown off that side of the sun. This model has got that data and picked that up. So it's 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 trying to predict right here that that uh, the conditions at stereo A are going to be uh, pretty rough there for a minute. So anyway, um, also up here, if you look at our density on green, um, that's you know that's not light, okay. I don't trust this past two days, by the way, guys. I don't think we can go out five days. It's always wrong. So, anyway. Um, but I am going to go ahead and end the video there, guys. Um, God bless. I'll come back with you guys here uh, tomorrow sometime, probably. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.